Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Devon Terrell, and welcome to the My Audio Nerds podcast, the podcast for audio nerds like yourself. Uh, please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Make sure you follow us on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, make sure you rate us because that really, really helps a lot. Make sure you comment in the whole nine. We appreciate you guys for the support and everything you have. We have a surprise for you today, so I'm going to just state my name. I'm going to say my DAW like I never do, and we'll <laughs> go from there. I'm Devon Terrell. I am a Pro Tools user to the in front of me <laughs> introduce yourself sir i'm a soldier of what was said to be the most installed music software of all time you lying that is not a statistic that's a lot there's studio. no way that's really studio, a, a yeah. stat for y'all yeah that's disgusting and I, it's believable because logic is proprietary and a lot of people couldn't get pro tools at one one time because remember you needed the interface that's true that's like very that. true so but that was a long it's time believable ago. but fl's been had like a eight year run on y'all before y'all allowed it to the masses that's true you know what's funny about that y'all have been or y'all were like i feel like whenever someone doesn't want to feel intimidated and get into the music they run to y'all first fl you know, the, the like you, the ui bro like, yeah it is it's, that it's little more inviting. Here, it's that more little... inviting you open up ableton you're confused you want to type a paper like fl you, is, is we see the step sequencer you see the playlist it's it's Simple. I know. Shout out to you getting clip game. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to introduce our For prestigious sure. uh, guest that we have today. Um, bring him on in. You've heard him on Kalani. You've heard him on her. Is one of my heroes, Snow Allegra. He's produced for so many people. He's an incredible writer, and he is also a professor. We have Swag. If Swag did it, is in the building. Clap it up one time. If Swag Harris. did it, y'all. Yay! <laughs> That's right. That's right. Real people, people that we are fans of, man. And, and thank sure. you so much for coming and stuff. Uh, thank you for having me. So the question that I like to ask people as soon as we get here is, what was your DAW journey? And when I say that, I just want to know, what did you start in? Yep. And then I want to know the DAW that you landed in today. All right, cool. So my brother, who's a little bit older than me, he was the first producer in the house. uh -huh. So the first rig that they saved our money up and got was a uh, PC cakewalk rig. Oh, wow. A cakewalk rig. Cakewalk. So I don't know who knows. Like, that's throwback, throwback. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, wow. So <laughs> right. that was like the first DAW I was introduced to. Right. And then um, he moved um, to like sequencing more into keyboards, the keyboard era, like oh, motif, tracking and that stuff. So when he went to college, he got the motif. Uh -huh. That's when the motif first Classic. dropped. Classic. Yeah. Right. right. So I started, he taught me how to sequence in the motif. Right. But, you know, of course, you had the MIDI out, MIDI in. And export. print your yeah. stuff. And yeah. It's a yeah. whole process. Right. So that's kind of why I started, because I was songwriting first, and okay. he was a producer. Uh -huh. And so when he went to college, he was like, uh, you can hold a keyboard, I'll show you how to do it, so you can, right. you know, do uh, produce your own songs. Right. So when I got to college... E Magic had just sold. Oh my, oh my god. god! Uh, to Apple, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fight that bro. logic, right. Uh -huh. right? So that was logic. So it was logic seven. Got wow. you. So, wow, I was in the computer lab. Long story short, uh -huh. I seen somebody like scoring it because because we was doing like orchestration, and all kind of stuff. So, got you. logic was cool then because you could not only sequence mm -hmm. but also have like really dope scoring capabilities. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, um, they were switching over and doing a lot of scoring. Uh, I forget the scoring uh software they were using at the time. Dang it. Sabellus. Was it Sabellis? I don't know. Uh, Sibyl, I never say it right. I know I'm saying yeah, it so yeah, wrong. Yeah, but one but of those. I'm yeah. one of those kind of programs. Yeah. Okay. And so everybody switching over to Logic for scoring. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and he was doing like, uh -huh. you know, production stuff. I'm like, yo, what is this? This what? is cool. He was like, oh, this is Logic. This is how you, you know, set up an instrument track. This is how you pull up a virtual instrument. And then he walked out the lab. And I stayed for hours. Just mm -hmm. messing with it. Just like messing thing. with it. Right. And then that's when my love for Logic and still is right. to this day, you know what I'm saying? One right. of the greatest dogs of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, production. we have finally given you a Logic Glue user. Yeah. One time. We are clapping <laughs> up for you. Y'all been they begging were... for somebody on Logic. Now, I will say this, on this podcast, we show, out of all the DAWs, yeah. the one DAW that none of us use, yeah. that we show the most love to, yeah. is Logic. As y'all should. And, you, and, and I'll get, deserved, I, we'll, yeah. we'll give it to you, and the reason why we say it's because from a standpoint of being the most well-rounded yeah. DAW, from a recording standpoint, yeah. from production, yeah. just being able to do everything that we kind of always argue with each other in our separate DAWs, yeah. Logic does all of those things really well. Yeah. And I, we always make sure we show love to Logic. Well, and we Apple, appreciate y'all. Yeah, Apple showed us that <laughs> we, the music company, like, 
not even the music companies, but the music industry in ex- as far as music technology mm. is so non innovative because they are not a music company. Right. But right. at the same time, they figured out ways to incorporate all walks of life, yeah. all pieces. Right. On top of um, I understand knowing how to make, yeah. yeah, they're and good even at like that. Using and um, I guess leveraging their other deals to like with the Adobe Atmos thing. Yeah. Logic yeah. Was the first with with yeah. that Access. with that integration with spatial, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. and I honestly that was gonna make me go, oh, I'm about to jump back over to Logic for just spatial um right. stuff like that, because obviously that is be that's gonna that's becoming a standard. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like right. with albums now, like as far as like um. You know, we have our friends that say, give us yeah. a spatial version too. You know yeah. what I mean? And stuff like that. Like, that's really important. So, for me, being a Pro Tools user, uh, I would need the HD system right. in order to even get to that kind of place. Right. But I don't care for that because I don't need I don't need an HD system. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, so, right. it was weird. I, was, I, I thought that was really odd to me too that in order for me to have like surround sound capabilities and Pro Tools, I needed to up my whole thing. Yeah. Like, that threw me off. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And I like that logic was just like, listen, we come straight integrated into yeah, the whole thing and stuff like that. Yeah. So... It's, so obviously you landed on Logic yeah. and you're just a Logic Pro user yeah. and stuff like that. Um, do you record vocals in yours as well? Cut scratch tracks and stuff yeah, like that I too? Yeah, I have. I mean, heavily, uh, when we was in the studio um, on 8th, we had Pro Tools rigs and, and Logic rigs. Mm-hmm. And I made sure that we had Logic rigs on the computer because right. I, I did a lot of developing and stuff. And you know, I don't consider myself an engineer, engineer, but I do understand language and I have an ear and it can work my way around it. Right. So. Yeah, I did a lot of tracking in Logic. I mean, vocals, live instrumentation, right. you know, learning different ways to set up, you know, buses and oxes and stuff like that. Right. Um, uh, correct ways to do different chains and sins. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like mm-hmm. I've 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 used it pretty 360 um for the most part. Right. Less now um than I have in the past, but right. yeah, man, I've done I've done full vocals like, you know, mm-hmm. To our edit vocals, like right. sometimes I'll do Pro Tools sessions. Uh, you know, we we'll do cut vocals and Pro Tools right. with engineers and stuff. And it's like I don't want to sit and wait or like point to the engineer right. how to how to cut my vocals and send me files. And you just and I just do it in Logic and send it back, right? And call it a day call and stuff day. like that. Do all my editing, and everything. Got you. So you like to actually do some mixing and stuff like that yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got you. Got Especially you. Especially when it comes to my sound, like you know, what I'm saying my uh-huh. drums and stuff like that, like right. or my keys. Right. You know, I like to sit down and really get it sonically where I want it before I go to mix. Which most engineers I've worked with uh-huh. have preferred. For me, I can't speak for everyone, but for me to send my stuff printed, it's just like yo, just give yeah. me stamps. yeah, give it right. to me, right? It's right. like I right. can't recreate the sound you got, like right. just run it, and mm-hmm. it sounds like you know what you're doing, so right, cool. Is that pretty common for you, as far as just like you know when you're submitting things to like mix engineers yeah. and stuff like that? Like it's just like yo, print your effects, the yeah. whole nine, and send yeah. the stems, and that's yeah. it. Got Absolutely, you. Okay. and okay. I always have a you know drop pass prepared. Yeah. I have, you know, the ox is prepared, printed. Nice. But, you know, I usually start with just it printed on. Right. And then see, check the temperature. Yeah. And they're like, well, we want the ox printed. We want it. It's like, all right, boom, here you go. Got you. you. Know? And separate right. the effects yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so one, one other question I have for him. Um, as far as that's concerned, when you're, for instance, sometimes when I get a producer to send me, like, obviously they send me a wave file, MP3, I'm banging yeah. the MP3, and I put it in my session, I'm listening to it, and I love it. And then... When I say, okay, cool, send me the stems. Mm-hmm. When they send me the stems, the sonics are way different. Yeah. Because yeah. I noticed they may not, they have they had a lot of stuff probably on their stereo bus. Yeah. And they took it off. So yeah. what is do you have do you mess with your stereo like I bus do. a lot? I do. And what I what I've I started doing over the past few years, me and one of my uh, one of the guys I collaborate with, we start experiment with actually whatever we put on the bus, stereo bus, we uh-huh. put it on the individual track and take the limiter off. Gotcha. So we're running the processor through, like, for example, God Particle, shout out. Jason, Jason Joshua. Joshua that we, yeah. The GOAT. Fans, bro. Um, Massive fans. Like, you know, we just start experimenting <laughs> with, like, using that as a plug-in. Mm-hmm. On our on our <laughs> stuff, right? So that when we do export, and then we'll put the limiter on the stereo, yeah. right? So it's just louder, right? But the 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 uh, the sonics are the same, right? Yes. So right. I printed that way. Now I've experimented with engineers. It's like they'll be like, oh, you know, I do it, take it off and send it. Obviously, it doesn't sound the same, right? Then I will do it with it on the track, individual tracks instead of like bouncing everything, like right. Just trying to figure out streamlining ways to do it faster, right? I mean, obviously, one way is just to they uh, bounce out each, each thing one by one right. through the stereo bus printed right. or just put it on all the tracks. And just go yeah. bounce yeah. and call it a day, which makes day. more sense, yeah. actually. I, and that's 
one thing because that always bothered me when I get that beat from the producer yep. and I'm like, fam, <laughs> this ain't hitting the same, bro. Yeah. Like something changed and stuff like yeah. that. So I always wondered about that because I have a friend of mine that uses like he puts like a fat filter satin on and yeah. a limiter. And that combination for him is magic. The sound, yeah. Yeah. To the point where I'm like, yo, screenshot your stereo master yeah. for me, and then I just do it within yeah. my what you call it yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. You was gonna ask him? What you gonna say? That ever happened to FL? Like I ever sent you a bounce? Can, let me say something about FL. First of all. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then now, I'll kill I was going to say, we don't care about that <laughs> distorted output. Y'all call music. Not With the limit on the master. I love how people know that. <laughs> you know what I don't like about y'all bounces? What you don't like? When I know I got an FL Studio producer sending me a oh. beat, is when I see current, current master. <laughs> y'all, stop. Insert. It's like the way y'all like y'all bounce comes out is so nasty. But if you don't... If it's you efficient. don't label if you, it, if you, if, you, if you do it right, it's sufficient. It is, but it's nasty because I don't like that I get a master, a current. Mm -hmm. Like, I know yeah, everyone. Yeah, the current is dumb. It, like it's like, why is there two forms of the fight, like a whole Final, stem yeah. of a beat? It's like, stop doing that. So for <laughs> y'all, no, y'all got that messed up. Um, I know that you have one of our uh -huh. one got to goals or your comparisons. Can yeah. you lay, lay this one on us right quick? Before we do that, uh -huh. um, back to the dog conversation. Sure. Yeah. If you had to jump ship from Logic, what is your second choice? Uh, Probably uh, Ableton. Where? Interesting. Yeah. Probably able to. <laughs> the, the, like, I mean, the the interface is trippy to me, but the functionality is cool. For sure. And right. I actually started transitioning at one point because at the time I will I will say that I didn't like the internal sample uh, uh, sampler that Logic had as much. Got right? you. Okay. So I uh, when Serato. So between that and uh -huh. me transitioning uh -huh. to Ableton because I like the simpler sampler. Right. Uh, Serato dropped. Yes, uh -huh. and so I was like, "Well, I have a standalone, right?" Yeah. So then I was like, "Never mind," because right. I was talking to Danger, and Danger uh, was getting was like, "Man, you got to switch, bro." He was like, "You got to switch, like everybody switching." I was like, "I right. do, right. I'll, I'll explore." Right. So I got it, start poking around, setting it up, uh -huh. start getting familiar with it. And then Serato Sampler dropped, and yeah. I was and like, it was yeah. It, was you a fan of it? or like, I loved it. Oh, you loved it. Mm -hmm. right. I loved it. Right. And then um, for how I sample anyway, and then Logic updated. Uh -huh. And that new sampler is crazy. Word. What's the name of your new sampler? It's, um, shoot, I don't even know. What was you using before that, by the way? I was using the uh, the Logic sampler, the EX24. The EX24, okay. Yeah, and this one, the new one is, uh, what is it? I think it's called... Uh, Sorry, uh, quick sampler. Quick sampler? Yeah. You you got, have you, you have it on your screen right now? Oh, know. nice. Now, yeah, you can pull. You can actually click it. We can actually take a look at it. I want to see it because I know about Logic. I know about the EX EX twenty four. Yes. And then I know about Ultra Beat. I'm not sure if yeah, that's still Ultra there. Beat. Ultra yeah, Beat yeah. two. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But this is one I use. I mean, it's pretty cool. You can drop drums in it, chop it up, put melodies in it, chop it up. Looks um, simple. It looks super simple. Super simple. Um, I don't have any. Uh, I don't think I have any. What's oh wow. This? Yeah, that I don't want to do the tag. That, but, uh -huh. but just to show you, like, uh huh. Um, you know, I don't have a keyboard here, but yeah, can, yeah. But just to see, like, and it's chopping up the sample and stuff yeah. like that. That's dope. Okay, cool. You can chop it up. You can move these around. Right. You know the transients. Right. Right. Um, you can spread it out over the keys and stuff. It's you know, so it's pretty cool. That's dope. And you spread it out against the thing. You know. Yeah. Um, I recently got my hands on, and it looks kind of similar to it. I got my hands on. I'm not sure if you guys seen. Uh, Auto Tune has uh their sampler that slicer? they just oh, yeah. slicer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it kind of that's what yeah. it kind of reminded me of that just now when I just looked at it. It was interesting, interesting. where it just lets you yeah. do. Obviously, Auto Tune is like built into it and stuff yeah. like that. So mm -hmm. I've been experimenting with a lot of different samplers as of lately because a lot yeah. of them have kind of been dropping and yeah, kind of yeah. playing around. Um, I recently got really hooked on Wave CR8. Okay. Yeah. So okay. the reason why I like it is because they have this function called the Cosmo function. Okay. Where I don't know how they figured this out, but it 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 takes a snapshot of your entire sound library, all your kits one and everything, one shots, and it'll organize it oh, wow. into sonic words so okay. it'll be like so literally i could type in snare dark saturated Punchy. it'll give me yeah. all the wow. bro Do, yeah. doesn't output have something similar to that too i'm not aware. there's a i think excellent audio i think the okay. other people that have it they yeah, have something yeah, like okay. that where it's like a it, it just gives you characteristics right. but they have a cosmo window where it's cosmo? like yes. you can no, click no, around no, it's like towards the bottom or punch oh, your yeah. stuff you know it's i have seen that nuts. yeah like it's wild nice. yeah we already know who the who has the best stock sampler though that's not even who god who one on the screen FL, who, FL. FL Studio? FL Studio. First of all, okay, what is y'all sampler? The it's, Edison? No, just sampler. Free it's called sampler? sampler? It's the oh, it's where I drag and drop my drums. Like, it's essential if you're going to use FL. 
Y'all are just a. It's amazing. I don't know, man. Open it up. Open it we up. We just don't Bro. trust y'all. Yeah, I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, right. It just <laughs> something about FL Studio. We just incredible. don't trust y'all, it's man. Incredible, man. I don't know what it is. Shout but, out to FL. But I'll let you rock. But you can uh, give us our it's one. Gotta the man go behind the most. machine, though. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. <laughs> it really at really the end of the day. At the end of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day, we know. Objectively speaking, exactly. But logic is still superior. Wait till we get one of them FL gurus. We are gonna bring Night on. Oh my God. I'm gonna have a. Fun Here we go. Well, today um, we go. Today we're getting our logic yeah. off because everybody's like, logic, like, they gonna go crazy. They, they want they representation. It. It's, it's wild. Like yeah. logic com- representation. And you exactly. a good fighter for logic. You're not just holding it back. Yeah, yet. you fight oh, for a whole uh, nation of uh, of, 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 of users and stuff. Logic is making up for mad episodes. Just, oh yeah, but logic. we always show love though. So yeah, it's all right. sure. logic yeah. is the goat. It is. Uh, I'm not gonna hold you. We are gonna get into our one gotta go. Um, we're just gonna run through a bunch of. You don't hear about reasons no more, do you? No, because of logic. That's kind of true. Reason got logic out of here. I think so. I think I mean, so. Because at, at, at the at time, the time. It, it was like logic was reasons. Yep. Logic reasons. Mm-hmm. And even like academically, that everybody was teaching reasons. Yep. Yes. That's, that's now, true. Now, now you don't even think logic. about it. You know that's what I true. think packed up and got logic really in? When I was at Full Sail, Apple products were like what they were pumping into yeah. us. Yeah. Like heavy. Yeah. So I never touched logic. I, I was like, oh, Apple has a DAW. Like I never even used it. Right. But they were teaching us on logic. So I even think, though Pro Tools came later in yeah. full sale, they were teaching us logic. logic. Yeah. I think that's Straight Apple up. being innovative. Oh, it was again, genius. A- Apple saying, all right, we're going to bring right. the our young. entire suite here. Yeah. Right. And y'all are going to learn it. Right. Not only you got, y'all going to learn it, y'all going to grow with it. And yeah. take and it. I think, and, and it, you, imagine if UAD came and gave their entire suite to oh, the schools. Got you. Know. you. Then I would like, use it. You know what I mean? And also, I would say they were innovative by, you know, having their version of, of Fruity Loops Garage Band. Oh, yeah. Oh, as yeah. like yeah. a free, <laughs> as a free. Yeah. That's for life. That was so, disrespect. That was disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what we said about Garage Band? We said, yo, I, so we all use Garage Band, right? So right, we all use Garage Band yeah. at some point. Yeah. So we was like, yo, is it, what's that moment that you had when you went in Garage Band, you was using it for years? Then he was like, I'm going to buy Logic. Logic. Yeah. And then and you like, finally say, like, you open the logic, you're like, this is the same for? thing. Yeah. Right. We said, we said it's logic, so similar. We said logic on steroids. Of, yes, it's just right. We said logic of Batty and uh, Garage Band, her underrated sister. Yeah, her yeah. sister <laughs> that gets no love for access. And then, and then uh, Fruit Loose is the ugly cousin. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout out to Fruit Loose. She just looked, she just looked bad in the group. Exactly. <laughs> it's like in the group. <laughs> damn, she kind of eye. Like nah, you know, Studio <laughs> One is the ugly cousin. So, uh, yeah. Now Pro Tools is the girl that's like, yo, everybody like us. Like, why? Why do everybody like us? Like, she's not. She's not all that. Like we put in different spots. Like yo, y'all wildin'. She knows that. Pro Tools the OG. It is. Ableton might be the ugly cousin. That's another combo. Nah, nah, Ableton is, Ableton, nah, Ableton is, the, is the nice girl next door. That's like, yo, she. I can see myself with her. Like yeah. everybody Studio can see themselves. Studio One is bro. the nice girl next door. No, it's not. Her. Studio One is is that annoying girl that come bother you all the time. That's who <laughs> Studio One is. Like, yo, you annoying. Right, we gonna get into the one gotta go. We gonna do a bunch of verses. <laughs> Um, I've done my research. You, you so. see, you getting off this real quick. You see, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, off yeah, this yeah, real yeah, quick. quickly. It's hard enough. 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 All right. I won't take it. <laughs> um, so I only have a few, but um, we'll start it off. Waves or UAD? Waves or UAD? Waves. 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 I'm a waves. Right I, I gotta go waves. I gotta go waves. But yeah, go ahead. I'll let you go. Mm-hmm. Big studios or more intimate? Like you studios. know what, man? I used to be like a big studio, like. Like, oh, I gotta gotta go to the big studio. But right. now the older I am, bro, like I really like intimate uh mm-hmm. settings. Like I really like to hear what I'm doing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. big studios came more like cosmetics and it's yeah. like yeah. you know, you think you banging out, but you're not really banging out. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I really love the intimacy now. Mm-hmm. That's funny he mentioned that because we've experienced that plenty of times. So we don't we don't work in big studios. Often, like right, at right. all, right? We mostly just work home studio or yeah, just like yeah. small intimate yeah. studios. So when we work in our smaller environment, it's something banging, it's gonna bang outside. Yeah, for right? sure. For when sure. we we worked with in a big studio at recently mm-hmm. one time, and we're in the studio, we like, oh my god, like <laughs> dude, we vibing and stuff, and then we put it in the car. He's like, what the? F-? Like it, <laughs> it was like, yo, he took something out. Like, I was something like, yo, was something's wrong. But it, but I've experienced that back in the day when I was going to studios yeah. like that all the time. Like you just be you, you get your feelings hurt. Um, yeah. and I. That's why I've been hearing a lot of producers, yeah. um, engineers liking the more intimate setting, yep. and intimate vibes, and stuff like that. Even yeah. when I see the mix guys, sometimes they're in like smaller, more yeah. intimate kind of rooms and stuff like that. For give, the me, most part. give me a good midfield speaker, yeah. right? With a sub, I'm straight. With a sub, yeah. and I'm straight. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I feel too. Output is is good too. With the speakers, yeah. yeah. I've always wondered because I know you you cop them. Yeah, right? oh, the I, I didn't cop them. 
Oh, he well, said, shout, out to Alpha. shout out to Alpha. He shout out to Alpha. Shout out to Alpha. You know the vibe. Y'all know what's going on over here. You know, I got to send those. Shout out to Alpha. What's your favorite output plugin? Are you into there? Yeah. Oh, man. Honestly, it used to be um, Substance. Yeah, Got you. Joint. The bass but, the bass Yeah, module. but now, man, I'm really heavy in the arcade, and it's not yeah. even, well, the loop capability is uh-huh. also like a dope sampler, and yes. just like uh-huh. like texture-wise, like it's yeah. really cool. So I use my, I, I find myself going, especially like for the vocal chops and stuff yes, like that. Hooked. Yeah. Hey, vocal. I, Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So yeah. arcade has really become like my main output. The string, the string, um, Plugging is dope too. What is it called? Uh, analog strings. Yeah, analog, analog strings. That's strings. Fire. Yeah, that That's was a dope. Vibe. Yeah, yeah, I like those so too. For if sure. I had to pick my top three, it'd be analog, uh, substance, analog mm-hmm. string, arcade, arcade okay. being number one. Right. I, I say the same yeah. thing, yeah. especially yeah. with how much they update, like yeah. arcade and stuff and like now, that. Now like, you could do the chromatic um, things in arcade. They have sounds broken out chromatic. Oh wow! Yeah. Instead yeah, of just sticking update. to a key and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. I keep telling people, here. man. Like, I, so I'm a big advocate for like arcade yes. and stuff. Yeah. Cause I used to see on Twitter, I used to argue with people back and forth about it. Yeah. Like, yo, is it really worth? It? I'm like, I'm telling you, no, it's worth it's it. It's so worth it. Like, it's worth it. I get new stuff all the time. Like, we have one of our friends, Courtney, who's on the on the pod yeah. too, and he put me onto a new module that that been there on yeah. the pod. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was like, you never checked out Honey, and I was like, yeah, no. Honey is fire. See, like. I, I never knew about Money that. Is fire. Yeah, like it's insane. Mm-hmm. I like their '70s, '80s. Yeah, the vintage joint catching me. Yeah, yeah. vintage Simpsons and stuff. Nice like that. transitions and stuff. Oh Crazy. yeah. Oh, dude. <coughs> so yeah, so like arcade, that. arcade. That girl. That's his yeah. joint. Uh, Jupiter versus the Prophet. Ooh, I'm gonna say Jupiter only because uh-huh. I have Jupiter X at home. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I I love Rolling Cloud. Yes. Got yeah. you. Okay. As, actually, let's do it. Rolling Cloud um, emulations versus Arturia emulations. Rolling Cloud. Where? He's Rolling Cloud guy. Rolling Cloud. I don't Straight blame up. him. It feels like Rolling just said, yo, we got it. You've been yeah, running with that for a while, too. You've been kind of advocating for Rolling for a while. Yeah. I mean, it's Rolling. Like, they really, so, yeah. like, man, this new wave of product is incredible. I have the uh, Juno, the new Juno as well. Oh, nice. I keep that's, seeing a lot of producers <laughs> stepping into that Juno. Fire. Yeah. Juno is hot. The... Um, you know, I said the Jupiter X is fire. I wanted to, it started out me wanting the eight, the Jupiter eight. Got right? you. So I hit Jimmy Jam. I was like, I know they discontinued them. Do you have? Do you know anybody who got one that's selling? Or, right. You know, you got one that you're selling. <laughs> right. And so he linked me with um with Roland and like man, it was like check out the X, and mm-hmm. I was like, fucks with this. Like, right. I'm, I'm <laughs> not mad at this at all. So right. That's been that man. I love the analog warmth of those synths. God, I I yeah. totally understand. Yeah, the, and the simulation is great. Like right. the technology, um, as far as it, using it in a DAW yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. It's, got it's you. Fire. It's really dope. It's like it's really way dope. easier to yeah, do. Because yeah. I remember back in the day, it was tough. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! Like quantizing it in the actual. Uh, like space and then yep. dumping it into the yep. game. like that was a thing. Much better now. Heck yeah! So I remember better. Logic. You know they used to teach us something called, and this is old. What I don't know if you remember Sys X Data. Oh yeah. Sys X Oh man, yeah. Oh my god. What is that? What is it? The uh, audio to MIDI. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some weird thing. So yeah. like we had to dump like to recall like. I forgot what it was to recall, but we had to dump like the the digital language yeah. into the DAW yeah. in order to recall it later. And yeah. stuff. it was something crazy. I had a class on it. Like yeah. that's how deep it was. Like it was like I think they streamlined that now too. I, think I would hope. Better. Yeah, yeah I'm, I would I haven't hope. Haven't done it in a while, but SysX date. I never forgot that. Like SysX, yeah, nice. crazy. Nice. Was that your last one? Gotta go, my uh, brother. I got a couple. Too. I got a couple more. Okay, right, give it to him. Come on. Live instruments uh, versus digital synths. You have to pick one for a session. Let's say. Oh, I have to pick one. Right. Yeah. Dang. So your room of the best guitars, bass, uh, live okay. drum, stuff like that. Or no, I'm going live then. You know? You just go going straight live. live. You just yeah. going straight live. I go live. Um, last joint, outboard gear versus plugins. Either effects or... or <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, the, that's, <laughs> that's always a, the that's toughest a one. one. It is tough. It depends on the variables. See? Mm-hmm. I always go I know your variables too. I love I really convenient. love convenient. I know yeah. what the variables I love are. the convenience of plugins. Yeah. I always yeah. go plugins. See, and that's a generational see between you and me that's a generational thing because I'm a lo- I'm a lover of outboard. Oh yeah, I love right? outboard. Like I love yeah. it. Yeah. Of course, plugins. Yes. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I said thank God. But um yeah, like what's your like what did what do you feel for it? Like what do you go to? I mean, I love analog gear, right? Right. I love analog gear. So if right. I had to pick between, I'll go analog, right? Right. But I do love the convenience, and digital is much better now. Yes, like a, like like it's it's damn close now. Right, right. So um, 
Yeah, if I, oh, if I, you know, you said, oh, you got to choose. I go analog. Right. I feel you. Straight I up. Know, yeah, Straight probably. up. You, you, and digital so close. It's like, bro, just, I might it's, as well. It's, it's and so, I, I don't got to recall it. I know. But can I, say so, can I say something about analog gear? Mm -hmm. Analog gear just makes the process so much more fun. Because there's, for me, it's like there's nothing like putting my analog piece on something like, only try it on this. And it surprises. It. Like, there's yeah. something about that relationship of just like, just trying things. I don't know. There's some type of. I feel like a scientist when I'm using my analog gear. Like I and, love and it. And it's like you never know what happens either. Like the characteristic of it. Oh right? yeah. Like yeah, you know, dust or like just age. Yeah. Right. Like all that add character to it. It's right. like it playing a uh, live instrument versus you know. Trillion. Yeah. yeah. It's like the age of the strings, like the yes. room, right. the player, right. the character. Yeah, so it's right. it's a lot of that I feel with analog that is really cool. Like it's like character. Right. A little right. bit more character. And we spend time trying to emulate that digitally, yeah. I feel. Even if we're like, you know, well with me anyway, when I'm sequencing, I'm a drummer first. Right. Um, you know, sequencing drums or whatever, like with the velocities and dynamics, like I'm constantly thinking about uh -huh. like feel and groove and how yeah. how that really interact. Right. And um I do a lot of layering sonically. So like where I'll do eight oh eight and I do bass. I you know, or synth, you. Got and you. synth. You know what okay. I'm saying? So you that's like when we get into like what I call sonic composition. Mm -hmm. So it's like one thing to compose like a chord progression or whatever, but right. when you really get into the sonic composition of it, I feel like that's when you really start shaping uh -huh. the record. Got you. You know what I mean? So for you, and I, I love where we're at uh, now, um, as far as all the people you work with from her yeah. and stuff like that, I was saying off mic earlier, I was like how you really cultivated a sound, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is something that him and I talk about all the time about mm -hmm. you, as far as the era where there was this shift yeah. of sonics. Yeah. Like I remember... <laughs> The first time I heard that project, it was in 20, I forgot where I was, but I remember my homegirl, she was like, you never heard of her? I was like, no. And she put it on, and I remember being like, you know, yeah. for an artist, it was like, whoa, I'm not yes. doing something new. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it was radical. Like, it was in the midst of, like, the, the trap soul boom. Yeah. Right. But it felt like she, it was growth. It was growth in a sense, because that era of... This shift in R&B period, yeah, because that's when it was like the freshman class was her and Summer and all yeah, that. Yeah, they were new but on the block. Was, it made alternative mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Kaylani, oh like yeah. I know I've I've seen you experiment Lucky, with like that yeah. '90s sound. Yeah, you know what I mean and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So and that's kind of where we landed, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, after all these years. Yeah. So as far as uh, our topic today, this is mm -hmm. why I kind of wanted to bring this to you because. What I want to understand or what I kind of want to just discuss is yeah. basically synth technology. Yeah. And basically when you just land in and said sonic layering and things yeah. of that nature, I want to know or I want us to discuss how we approach synths and yeah. stuff like that. Like how do we approach it? Are we the type to dial in our settings? Do we just take the stock sound and just say, all right, that's it. Yeah. Like you talking about layering and stuff like that yeah. is something I find fascinating and I just kind of want to dive yeah. into that. So when you do that, especially knowing about the albums that I've heard yeah. and stuff like that, like what is your process with the Man, Sims and stuff like honestly, that? Honestly, like I'm, my heroes, right, are mm -hmm. Quincy Jones, uh, uh, Timberland, Pharrell, uh -huh. a lot of those, Teddy Riley, a lot of those guys. And for me, like they were groundbreaking sonically. So, mm -hmm. and they had identities as right. producers. Mm -hmm. right. So um, I say that to say, when I really started getting in production and really wanted to kind of create my carbon print, uh -huh. that was one thing that I wanted to be cognizant of. Like, how do I just, I don't want to sound stock. Right. right? I, I don't want you to just like That's a good one. listen to a track. Because I, I started listening to tracks and I was like, oh man, like I can recreate that. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because um, I used to do a lot of reconstructs uh -huh. uh, uh, when I first got into production because like, right. I wanted to learn sonically what was happening. Right. So I'll listen to my favorite producers and try to remake what they were doing. Right. Um, or, you know, some things. I was like, wow, that was easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then like, uh -huh. Like when I first when I started working with Kaylani, um, one of the things that I wanted to when I met her, I was like, well, before I, let me back up a little bit. Uh -huh. Before I met her, <coughs> one of the things that um, one of um, this is a this is a funny story. One of my interns at the time, Jahan Sweet, who's Ooh. going on. Yes. Oh yeah. If you know about him, you know his yeah. his yeah. catalog. Is, Ridiculous. He's going crazy. Right. So Jahan was like my intern. Got right? you. And uh, one of the things I would talk to him about was like, man. Like I want to find an artist where you know I could do this '90s nostalgia, but it hits hard. Right. Like right. you know, you thought about um, 
R and B uh soul or uh, hip hop soul or what that was in the nineties, like uh Joe to see, like it had a hip hop edge right. culturally, right. sonically, but right. they were singing on top. And right. I was like, at the time, nobody was really, really tapped into that. Right. Like around 2010, 11. Yeah. Like everything was either like EDM, um, Florida kind of era. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. like, man, I wanna like how how do we make this like cool? Like so I just started mm-hmm. really thinking about it. So when I met Kane Lunny. She had like this raw energy, right? And so we try. I tried it on a couple of artists before, and it just it didn't connect. So I was like, man, maybe I'm tripping. Like I don't, you know, uh-huh. maybe it's not. Yeah, work maybe it's work. just like right. I'm right. ODing. Right. So when I met her, she had this raw like energy, and she uh, was like, man, I love '90s R&B, blase, right. blase. I was like, man, this could be fire. Right. So I play her um, the first song. We sat down and we start talking, and the first track I played her was First Position. Gotcha. So that was the first song we actually did. Right. And um, if you listen to that track, it's a Jodeci sample. Uh huh. And it's like basically like like 808 driven type right. of thing with the sample on top. Yeah. Right. And so we worked on it and I was like, nah, let's, you know, work on the hook a little bit. She wrote it. She wrote most of it like really fast. Right. And uh, I think the only part I had to rewrite was the hook. Uh huh. Just a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so that went really well. So me and Jahan have been talking. So quite naturally, like we both at the time had started exploring different things. So he started in the B room at the time um, we were working out of Getaway. Okay. And so he had did, like it was two sections to the track. It was like one, I can't remember the front half of the track. And the part that actually ended up being the track was like the end part of the track. Okay. So I went to the restroom and I heard it. And I walked by, I was like, yo, bro, let me get the back end of that. Right. Yeah. And so I went in the A room and then, uh, you know, produced our vocals and everything on that. Right. And that was Getaway. Got wow. you. So Fuck With You was the that. last record we did. Wow. And that record um, was actually a, a ballad at first. Like, I did the track as a ballad. Right. Then when I was sitting with her, I sped it up. Right. Mm-hmm. And just it's, and yeah. changed it. So, but it. like, go back to your question. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Those are kind of some of the things. Excuse me, I'm getting over allergies. It's all good. <clears throat> that season, <clears throat> we know. No, it's all good. It's all good. But those are some of the things that basically, like that, you know, you've gone into it yeah. with that mindset. Yeah, and I and I understand. Like one thing I always says, like know where the envelope is so you can push it, right? Yes. Right. So I knew like synths and stuff were like a big part of music as well. Then, so it's like uh-huh. I really got into like sound designing and tweaking like stock sounds or layering. Um, to your to your yeah, question. Sure. Uh-huh. So like I just wouldn't use a pad. You know, yeah, I right. would you know. Mess with the with the way different way um, you know um, square waves or whatever right. with the different Sontus. isolators right yeah. right um, put them through filters yeah. right. or play them and then like reverse them mm-hmm. so ah, if you listen you. to a lot of the that earlier stuff uh-huh. like even on fuck with you there are like some sense and stuff going arpeggiated sense and stuff like right. we may put like distortion on them right um, you know different type of uh, flangers and, right. and things of that nature right um, just really exploring this sonically was there right. or like embedding like I was like to have like little breadcrumbs and stuff in tracks where it's like uh-huh. Uh-huh, nobody know that's in there you know yeah. um, but but what, doing what do you it mean, in a way what do you mean by that John not to, not to let, yeah, I'll let you get one but what do you mean, I mean like, like little breadcrumbs like it may be a vocal a vocal chop you know that I put in there I might uh-huh. I might sing something and like ah, mess with it or right. like something musical that you wouldn't even know that's in the track but it add right. to the sonic dimensions of it yeah, like right. I, exactly. I think Feeling. about music dimensionally like okay. a painting like right. you know picasso or whatever where it's like you have you have like the idea of what you want to paint and you add depth to it with shadows and and playing with light and, and contrasting textures and, textures. and exactly. things of that nature gotcha yeah gotcha. so really exploring the stereo feels uh-huh. um uh you know so it's like you know having one or two hi-hat things going uh-huh. having yeah, like that, you know yeah. three or four snares going right. but but the but the trick to doing that sonically right is you do it without it becoming um, exhausting to the ear. Right. Yeah. Right? Because right. it's about the song. True. It's about the song and ultimately. And the longevity of it. Exactly. Right. right. So, you know, sometimes uh, producers, we get happy and it and it <laughs> becomes about our ideas too much. And it's just like a clusterfuck, uh, right? Yeah. So it's like we have to be careful while being creative. And I think that's the importance of intentionality in Sonics. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. We overcompensate. With a whole bunch of ideas because sonically it doesn't feel complete. Yes. Right. 
to us, right? Right, mm-hmm. right, right. So Especially it's really in- like just being intentional about what you're doing, and then it comes down. I would say pr- producing is multi- multifaceted, right? It's more than just writing the track or writing the beat, right? Right. That's like step one, right? Mm-hmm. Write the track. Right. Ooh. Now you got to think about sonically what's happening. Then you got to go into a ranger. Right. And then if the song comes after, then you have to arrange again. You have to produce it around the song. Right. So so for me, my process is like, it's not just like, here's the track. Mm -hmm. All right, you write your song or we're writing a song and I'm building a track. It's like, all right, let me go back and listen to it. I really like this, but it doesn't make sense. Right. You know what I mean? Understood. So I think that when you talk about sonics and layering and stuff, like it really have like there's things that I want to do. Uh-huh. And then there are things that just make sense to the song. Got yeah. you. So it's like a obviously it's case by case yeah, on right. that. And then as far as the way you approach your actual production and synths and stuff like that, yeah. would you say that you're more of let's see what happens? So in a sense of like for you to make the decision of let me put a distortion on this arpeggio. Yeah. Like that decision, is that something like do you have like say for instance like effects already set up and it's like drag and drop like how do you go about deciding yeah, man, those types I, of things? I'm, I'm organic you uh-huh. know what i mean is is i'm composing on the, on the fly got you so for me yeah i do have templates right right if i'm walking to the session i have a template right. i set up i know what drums i like i right. know what synths i like right and then as we write the song or write the track then once we have a song it's like what is the song saying right it's like think about it this way man it's like when you have a script to a movie you shoot the movie, uh-huh. and then you score around the movie yeah. to That's capture true. the emotion, right? Right, to capture it. Exactly. Right. So it's the same thing with production to me. It's like, all right, cool. Part of the script writing or you know, songwriting is creating like the foundation of the track. Right. But once you have the song, once you have the vocal performance, uh-huh. then you go back. And sometimes you know, you don't have to go back and, and change things. It works. And then right. sometimes you just have to objectively listen and say, okay, like perfect example, a song I did with uh, Tone Stith, uh, Devotion, yeah. right? Um, I did the drums and everything, and um, we were about to go to mix. And I was just like, you know, uh, that call was like, you know, the song ready to go to mix. So I was like, give me like three days. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Did not like the drums, the original right. drums. Right. And so I spent three days like reworking the drums around his vocal. Right. Right. To get it right. To get it right. right. Not only sonically, but pattern wise as well. Right. Because in that song, I go, there's live instrumentation, there's synths, there are guitars, right. there, you know, it's a Some lot voice, yeah. of stuff happening. Right. Um, but I didn't want it to sound like a lot of things happening. Right. At the same time. Right. So um, I wanted to be intentional about where the sonics of the 808 in correlation with the kick drum, Mm -hmm. what snares, how the snares were sounding stacked against each other. Right. So in that case, I took three days to just like work on the snare. Because you think about like my approach, I'm a hybrid in the way I think, right? So if you think about old production styles, like sometimes Uh they'll take a day to get the snare sound right. That's very true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, take, To true. get the sonics of live instruments, it's like, oh, try this amp. Let's try this. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's old school production. Right. We don't have the luxury of that now or the budgets, right? True. Yeah. But it's like in my dog, I can kind of have that same mentality of mm-hmm. like, just because I like this snare a lot, uh-huh. it may not work right. for this song. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So sonic composition is probably just as important or more important uh-huh. than the just like, the track writing in of itself, yeah. right, and stuff like that. So, yeah. so, so to kind of wrap what, for what for you, it's like we're producing. Here's kind of like melody, yeah. more chords, a yeah. little bit of drums. Yeah, let's start writing. Let's see what we come up with, and then it's like come now that we got the the vocal there. Yeah. Now let's accentuate this yeah. entire let's like color sound. The of, yeah. Let's yeah. color the picture and stuff like yeah. that. And that's a good. That's kind of like how we like to work, where it's just like him and I will <laughs> do like first hook. You know what I mean? Like he'll lay, we'll lay some melody, yeah. do a verse hook, and then we'll just sit and be like, "All right, now we know what we need." Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like we know where this whole thing, this whole That's ship right. is going, and stuff right. like that. Was it something that you want to ask? I remember doing sure, something no, you want to. I remember like something you said that stuck out to me. Uh-huh. It really um, opened up this whole thing of the generational like tunnel of how uh-huh. stuff gets passed on because it felt like he took my entire like brain, <laughs> what everything I was thinking in the sense of um, because my heroes obviously I'm. I know who the greats are. Right. And the Tims, the Pharrells, of course. But my heroes are who I lived for mm-hmm. and to who, what music I lived to. Yeah. Like what I was listening in high school. So yeah. I always say, you're one of my heroes. Right. Damn, Campers. And um, 
I'm influencing, I'm an embodiment of the sound that I intake. For right. sure. Whatever you intake. So for you to say that and for me to literally last night, I was on the phone with an artist that I work with a lot named Ose, and it was almost a mirrored conversation of, yo, hip hop. Like we, we were listening to Mary, Mary and Meth. And, yeah. Um, hip hop has lost its, uh, I guess, it, the blurred line between hip hop and R and B was blurry. It's blurry, but but more right. on the trappy side of right. things. Right. Whereas right. Boom Bap, I've been working a lot with Ninth Wonder, and yeah. I feel like yo, this sound is not here anymore on, yeah. in the mainstream. Right. right. Even uh, the resurgence it kind of made in the early 2010s with uh, first comes uh, first song that comes to mind is Holding You Down. Uh, yeah. Jasmine Sullivan, yeah. just like where is this at? Right. So right. even when you look at her new music, uh, Ose's new music. There's the hip hop element. We got rappers on the record and stuff right, like that. Right. So for you to say that, it was just like, whoa, this is happening. Yeah, again. the cycles of, the cycle, of yeah. everything, and I'm sure you've seen that a yeah. lot and stuff like that. Yeah. What would so like what's, and I hate that I hate to ask a question like this, like as far as like, well, what's inspiring you now? Yeah. But like as far as you know, to, to kind of sum this up, as far as <coughs> Sonics and stuff like yeah. that, is there anything idea wise that you are like looking at from a Sonic standpoint yeah. of jo- mixing genres? Absolutely, like, uh-huh. man. I'm really tapping into '80s now, mm. like you know, synth pop, um, right. '80s rock. Um, I'm really creatively in the alt space. Like I feel like I was early to the trap soul Very. dance yes. party, right? Very. So it's, I mean. <laughs> It it bores me some respectfully. It bored. I feel like uh-huh. those of us who was at the beginning of it, yeah, like it was great. We've like to there. see to see like, mm-hmm. you know, like people have taken it further and it's evolving. It's like man, this is so fire. Right. Like I never thought that I'd be a part of a new wave like yeah. that. Right. You know, what I'm even saying? as even as a right. co- consumer at the time, um, once I found the. The infamous sound, like the sign pad. Oh yeah. my god! Bro, we by the time we found far it, and wide. by the time I found it, I was like, "Man, it's late. It's we late. It's late, late, man. It's yeah. Late. yeah, bro. Like, but you know, it's funny because even some of like my her records on the first project were like three, four years old. Mm-hmm. Wow. Before right. the project, before even. the project right. came right. out. Right. So right. some of my stuff was older than some of the newer stuff that was on it because. Right. My, that's where my mind was mm-hmm. at that time. Right. So to see that, be yeah, almost timeless in a sense. Like rather, it's be really, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Right, changes, I never knew that. Changes is an older one. Right, an older that's one. an old, old one. Wow. Older one. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So um, you did that four years before. Like that's like insane for me yeah. to think about that. Because that, like, that dropped what 2016, 17? Yeah, it was 16. So, yeah, I was in I LA. Think, yep. I think changes was like 14. 14, 13, so three years, oh, three years wow, before. Wow, that's so, that was starkly different from like what that was out. You know, what, you know what's crazy, the... man? I'm working with an artist now. Um, uh, She recently signed, I'm not gonna, I don't think they made an announcement, gotcha. so I'm not going to say the name or her name or the label. Gotcha. Yeah. But we were in the studio in LA, and um, she was like, man, I, I just want to hear some old stuff. So I was like, all right, cool. So mm. I pulled up some stuff from like 2013, 14, <laughs> and she was like, yo, she just wrote something Hmm. Um, crazy, right? Like something I, so far bro. Like behind. I mean, I'm not gonna play the whole song, right? But even for me, it's just like, man, like this could legit come out now. Uh, wow. Bluetooth. We're gonna Bluetooth. Uh, so turn on your Bluetooth. Okay. Yeah. No, I want it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Not gonna, I was like, nah, hold on, I gotta hear that. Uh, it's gonna say inbox. Uh, it's something inbox. Tell me when it's in discovery okay, mode, Cam. On. Shout out to Cam on the on the ones and twos, on the ones and twos. Camden. <laughs> and do you that see That is it? crazy. Changes yep. being. Yep, inbox bang. Yep. Changes being like. Yeah, think, oh, I'm thinking about what I was making in 2014. I'm like, oh, Lord yeah. have mercy. I would have been like, damn, <laughs> what is this? I remember because uh, we was hyped for two weeks that we found that sign. Oh my God. Thing. And two weeks later, we was like, man. Yeah, it was too late. Came and went. I hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, you can turn it up. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm all the way up. Okay. And. Got a cam? Yeah, you're gonna turn it up for him. Hold on one sec. Hey, oh, I'm already vibing. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I've been on the west side, mm. trying to live my best life, trying to find a best vibe. I don't even get high. I've been out there, bad wine is nothing like the old times, nothing like the old me. Back when you told me you was never This is 20, this 20, 30, 30, Yo, me, boy. Like, yeah. That was like 2013. Yeah. Wow, that's so, crazy. So, but it's funny because. What? You know, I always heard like if you're making like just dope innovative things, it like yeah. if it's dope, don't throw it away. Right. Like right. It, it can always come back. So right. like 
I never got rid of my old stuff. Sometimes I go back and tweak the drums, but not, but when I, you know, hindsight listening back now, I was like, dang, like, uh-huh. you know, I wish I had some of that creative energy now. You know what right. I mean? Right, right. <laughs> like, like, I wish I was like fresh. Before this I was got fresh. Right. Right, right, before right, I got right. jaded by the game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Oh, we know. Oh, I was, yeah, I was know. talking about it with him, like <laughs> renovation season. Yeah. I was, I'd be oh, like, yeah. oh, for the next three weeks, if we're not inspired, all right, let's touch some of them old drums. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. modernize You, you know them. what I'm big on? And inspired, and I'll rap with this. Mm-hmm. When I'm big and not inspired at the moment, like it's like a week, I'll literally go into mining. Where I'll be like, let me yeah. organize everything. Yeah. Let me just go grab some new packs. Like yeah. I'll just reassess, change my templates. Yeah. Like I'll get into that mode and yeah. stuff like that, and just be mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. So when I come back, it's like, f- so it's just all new internal yeah. stuff. And I'm due yeah. for that. To be honest, I'm kind of due for a, a refresh oh, of like yeah. my stuff and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, you got one more. You got one yeah. more question. Go ahead. This is uh-huh. just a personal. Like, go ahead, of course. Well, out of my curiosity. Go ahead, man. So I know for the self-titled her album, you recreated um, Jungle. Yeah. You recreated that beat. And on the way here, I was listening to the two versions because uh, I was just credit mining and I saw you uh, as the producer. So I was yeah. like, all right, let me hear the difference and everything. And golly. <laughs> <laughs> he golly. On, he hit it on the note. So it's just like you said you were big on like recreating <coughs> yeah. just to see where people were at. How I won't even ask how easy, but how did you attack that? Especially with like a weird sample. Yeah. Line. So the first thing was, um, you know, she hit me. That was her idea. Oh, she dope. hit me, she okay. heard it, she was like, y'all want to cover this song? And I'm like, oh, that'd be fire. We should do it. Uh-huh. I couldn't find an instrumental. Wow. wow. So I tapped back into like, you know, my days of reconstruct. Right. So my approach is always like, first, I knew it was a sample, found the source. Uh-huh. Right. So I intensely, the way I, the way I transcribe things, um, if I'm trying to reconstruct it, is I, I focus in on a section. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me first start with the sample and see right. what's happening with the sample. Uh-huh. Right. So that was the first thing I like, cool, the, the sources in 3-4, they chopped it in 4-4 four, four, okay. or 12. It depends on how you're listening, right? Right. So I was like, 4-4, four, four, cool, boom. So the first thing I did was I was like, I'm not going to sound, I don't know how. It sound like 40 may, I don't know this, but he may have chopped it on a pad or a machine or something. Got you. So I was like, well, I'm going to free chop it, freehand it. Mm-hmm. So I took the, the, the original source right. and just chopped it on the grid in 4 Right, and, gotcha. and hurt. Listen to the sections, listen to the, and did it that way. Right, and, shift and then yeah, to, yeah. Because I heard that in a like yeah, yeah. And then I knew, like, I understood the language sonically. Understood the language uh-huh. of filters. So I, I using a low pass filter on this section. Right, you know. So I was like, boom. I already know that. So on this part of the sample, this is reverse. Boom. All right, cool. I already know that. Right. Right. So then the drum drum matching was was I wanted to match it, but still have my ID. Right. Have that's your your big, snake on it. Have my snake on thing it. Right. Because you can hear the difference. In of, the sonics of those drums yeah. and yeah, stuff like, like his that. His feels more um, intentionally in an right. R&B place. Yeah. Right. Rather than the Drake version where it's right. like you hear trappy elements. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was on that album uh, with all the trap. Thank me later. Uh, thank me later. It was on. Um, oh, uh, if you're reading, if this. you're yeah, reading sorry, this, sorry, yeah, yeah, got sorry. you. It was well, that kind it was of a tra- sound. Trappy. It was a mixtape. It was. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, it was real dirty, grungy, was trappy like, drums. Oh, if if Felt. Drake touched this for an R&B out for Take Care, these oh, are the drums. Right. For That's it. what have been. It. Yeah, got yeah, you, man. Got you. And it was cool. Like they were cool. Like we got permission mm-hmm. and everything. Right. And, and that's why, like, I create the master, recreate the master. Mm-hmm. So and then oh. I had a guitars to it to to my version. I had a few breaks here and there. Um, and that's why I was credited as a producer because I reproduced. Yes, yeah, you reproduced yeah. that. You altered the. Yeah, he's credited as a writer on it. Wow! Look wow! That. That's what's <laughs> up, man. Wow! Well, y'all. Well, swag, I just want to say, swag. Thank you so much. Oh, that's it. We yeah. done. Yeah. See, and, and that's, <laughs> that's we always get y'all like that too because yeah. it's like, yo, I, I don't get to talk about this, man. Like, then you go back into the regular world with these people that don't know about our lives. Like, you know, they don't know nothing about this nerdy stuff. But um, you know, I just want to say thank you so much, man. Thank you for having uh, me. For taking the time out of your schedule for just sure, to come and just sure. chat with. Us and just giving us some game, man. Like yeah. you know what I mean. As far as everything, and just just to kind of have this banter. We love having this banter, and we're just sure. really appreciative of our community. Um, and so we, uh, you being here is like a gift. You know oh, what I mean. You. As far as everything is concerned. When he reached out, I was like, yeah, I, I love talking I want about. Swag it. Oh yeah, because yeah. like, immediately cause we don't get a chance. And I like to let our guests yeah. know is that you don't get a chance. And I'm not saying I know your life, but I feel like producers, engineers, we don't get a chance to sit down in an interview style and get yeah. interviewed about. The back end, you know, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. the really technical sure. stuff. You so know, like, yeah. how was this song made? How did you meet? Yeah, yeah it's like, it's oh, like, tell us how you got your start. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, how did you find the God particle? Yeah, that's the right, right, right. <laughs> that's right. I want to ask you things that I can't read. Well, you right. know what I mean? The anyway, I got yeah. one. I got one last question too. Uh-huh. Um, especially when we bring on guests, I want to say if 
someone ha- that hasn't heard of you, what's the record, the production, the beat, the oh, just shoot. the record that you would think mm. this is swag? Right. Oh man. Because we, all, I got my favorites. I know if you, he has his favorites. Sure. So like, oh man, I don't even. That's that's crazy. Mm. I tell you why it's crazy because I feel like, like I've like, this is just me. Maybe I haven't. Uh-huh. I feel like in in every like little era in my in my little bitty career, uh-huh. like I've evolved in different sections. Like I uh-huh. feel like there is the the Kehlani era. era. Yes, uh-huh. there is the Her Volume One era. Right. There's the um, I used to know her era. Right. Yes. Right. And then um, there's like the Snow Tone. Snow you know. Yeah. Right. Um, and then like you know the world I mean it hurt my, a lot of my hip hop stuff. Right, so, I see. Okay, so, so you like listen, man. Like, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think. I, I don't think I'm there yet. Right. right so he got a compilation album. That's sure. what he's saying. Yeah, I, I, I don't think album, I'm bro. there yet. You yeah, know what yeah, yeah, I get I mean, you. I'm yeah. curious what's your favorite, but I don't. I, I My don't. favorite. Um, I have favorites. Like oh. I love Violet Skies and I love Rather Be. But my yeah, I gotta go with either Devotion or uh, Do to Me. Actually, oh, no, I'm going me. with Dude to Me. I like that. Dude to Me is my one. I ain't going to lie. That's dope. This I is... got my Spotify rap today, and that record came out like 2019. And it's yeah. still busting in 2022 busting. for you on your playlist and stuff. That's wild. Here we go. That By the way, that's coming. Throw that yeah. rap. I'm about to say that flood in that timeline. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, so... Again, Swag, I want to thank you for coming um, um, and stuff like that and just kind of giving us just your time oh, and man. the whole thank nine. Thank you all for having me. It's of been course. Awesome. Uh, this is the My Audio Nerds podcast, the podcast for audio nerds like yourself. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe, and make Follow sure that me. you rate us yes. on Spotify, Apple Music. Also, Swag, please give us your app, even though I'm going to have it all over the screens and if stuff like that. Swag did it. That's right. Yeah. On Everywhere. Instagram. Instagram, Twitter. Okay, he's yeah, on Instagram perfect. and Twitter the whole yeah, nine. It's your boy yeah. Devon Terrell, it's your boy LJ. Yeah. We're out of here, y'all. Thank you.